Do you hear us? <laughs> Do you hear us? Hi, Professor Crivier. We can oh, hear you clearly. May, may I call you Ignacio? Yes, of course. You can call me Alan. <laughs> it's, okay, Alan. <laughs> it's, it's a real Hello. And this is a, Hello, and Alan, Alan, sure enough, is, uh, is with me here. And so um, it's a real pleasure, you know, to, to have you with us for this uh, uh, workshop. And uh, we, uh, we are very keen, you know, at uh, seeing uh, this uh, demonstration of the Maiva implantation because I think that this uh, balloon expandable uh, valve from India, from Meril, uh, is uh, quite promising with some. Uh, uh, clear advantages uh, that we will explain uh, during the case or before the case if you want but uh, uh, well again it's a pleasure to have you we see you very well so if you want to introduce your people around and to present the case and make some comments about the new device sure first of all we are very honored and very happy to contribute to your course where we were many years ago as pupils and now we are showing one of our cases. I'm Ignacio, as you said. Uh, Hippolito Gutierrez is my colleague who will be scrubbing with me in the case. Lorena and Miriam are our nurses around. Belen is also our nurse and she will be mounting the valve. We will show it to you later. And then uh, two of my colleagues are going to, to show a few details uh, about the preparation of the case. So if you want, you we have uh, uh, just a few slides. Can we go to the presentation? So next, please. First of all, I want to introduce the technology because it's not so known yet uh, worldwide, although they have al already reached 1,700 cases in the world. Uh, this is a balloon expandable valve with honeycomb cells that you can see here that allow the access to the coronaries and a ceiling cuff around in the ventricular side. Next slide. The position, next, please. Uh, uh, is very simple because there are some uh, radio peak uh, bands. We see that the second radio peak band is the one that we place uh, in the annulus because there is some ventricular for shortening. So we start in this position, which is 70% aortic, and we end up with a position normally 85% uh, aortic and 15% ventricular. Next slide. Next. This is the navigator system. The valve is directly crimped on the balloon, and as you can see, it's a very flexible delivery system. Next slide. And this is the Python introducer that we don't have yet in, in position, and we will show it. Uh, it's an expandable 14 French introducer that is the same one for all sizes, from 20 to 32 millimeters. Next slide. And finally, we are going to predilate. We have relatively abandoned predilatation, but uh, we are redoing predilation now in more and more cases, about 20% of our cases. And in this case, we are going to predilate due to severe calcification. This is the mammoth balloon with excellent navigability. Next slide. And then in this case, we are doing something that is very fashion now, but I think it's not shown yet with balloon expandable valves. We are going to do commissural alignment, so I won't to our colleague Alfredo Redondo, interventional cardiologist, to explain uh, you how we are going to do the commissural alignment with this balloon expandable valve. Please, Alfredo. Okay. Hello. Next slide. I would like to introduce you the, this project we have been working on for like some, some months from now. And our, our aim is to be able to align the, the commissural post of the valve with the commissural native, uh, uh, the native commissions of the valve. So next, we develop a script that allows us to predict how the, the, the device is actually rotating when it's advancing through the aorta. So once it's in, in the aorta, we can then uh, rotate it to match the, to make that the uh, commissural post of the valve match the native commissures. You can see in the slides how we did that. And in order to be able to do this, we need to introduce the valve with a certain rotation uh, position. You can see in the, in, the, in the right of the presentation, we have to put one post, one commissural post uh, pointing down. So we did that. You can see in the, on, on, top, on the top image that the, the crimper, the, the valve inside the crimper, and it's with one post uh, pointing down. We assign this in vitro in a 3D model. This is a 3D printed model. Uh, from, uh, is was created from the CT scan of this patient, and so we implanted with this uh, orientation. And you can see in the in the in the right is the um, the um, head navigator from Philips, the head navigator tool, overlaid 
on top of the angiogram of the model. So may you, you can see that the, um, the, the commissural post of, the, of this device has a, a double line in the, in the, where the posts are, uh, where the commissars are attached. So we can know where the uh, commissural posts are. In this case, we can see the green line that marks the, 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 the three triangles that marks where the native commissars are in this patient. And we can see that the commissural post of the ball is well aligned with the, with the, with the patient. And here is more easily to see. We engage the, the, um, the left coronary artery with a catheter, and we can see that the commissures are like at 60 degrees from, from there. So it, this means that this is a, a good alignment of the valve. And now my colleague, uh, the fellow uh, Raul Delgado, is going to present to introduce you the, the, the today's case. Next slide. Uh, can I ask you a question just before? Sure. sure. Uh, concerning this alignment, are you doing that in each patient, in every patient, or only in case the, mm -hmm. the coronary ostium are low, uh, the distance uh, coronary ostium annulus is short? Actually, Alain, I don't think it's so important with balloon expandable valves for the coronary access, because normally it's quite easier than with self-expandable, but there are some publications suggesting that when you are not well aligned with the native commissors, you have higher gradients and higher progression of gradients in the follow-up. And this is the reason why we do it with balloon expandable. Here is just rotating the device when we crimp it. With other devices, what we need to rotate is the delivery system before entering the patient, but not with balloon expandable ones. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, very quickly, I'm going to talk also about the matchball study, a retrospective study, a match study, and I think this is the first comparison with APN3 valves. Next slide. <coughs> We did the matching for degree of calcification, annular size, left ventricular ejection fraction, and we found similar uh, procedural results, similar rates of uh, vascular complications, cerebrovascular disease, in hospital death. Uh, uh, actually, before matching, there was lower rate of peacemaker with my valve, 7 versus 14 percent, but after matching uh, two groups of 120 patients, there is no longer significant differences, although it's lower with my valve. Next slide. And no differences in the degree of aortic regurgitation or in the gradients and midvalvular area. And now, if you want, we can already move to the case and show you the background. If you don't have any more questions. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Please, Raul. Raul is uh, our fellow, the best fellow ever from Peru. Please, Raul. Uh, hello. I'm <laughs> going to present the clinical case. Hello. Yes, yes, we can hear you very well. Okay, the clinical case is about a male of 80 years old, risk factors, diabetes mellitus type 2, dyslipemia, cardiovascular history, uh, percutaneous coronary intervention of the left anterior descendant artery with one stent in 2011, and no allergies, the regular medication, uh, ASA, atorvastatin, and atenolol. The basal status is an independent uh, male patient with dyspnea and niha 1. The main complaint is dyspnea niha 2 since three months ago, uh, three episodes of syncope since two months ago. Laboratory and ECG are in normal range, I'm and the transthoracic echocardiography, uh, we got a frag, a ejection fraction of the left ventricle of 65%, aortic bar calcifies, uh, highly calcified. Um, the maximum gradient was 74, the mean gradient 43 uh, millimeters of mercury, and the uh, aortic valve area was 0 0.75, a mild aortic regurgitation, a mild mitral regurgitation. In the coronariography, no lesions to do treat. The CT measures, uh, the CT measures a perimeter of 82.8 millimeters, an area, an area of 532.4 square millimeters, and the height of the, the height of the right coronary artery, 21.6 millimeters, and of the left coronary artery, 19 millimeters. Uh, we have chosen uh, my valve of 70 of 27.5 millimeters because we got an uh, overexpansion of, of 12% in the 
for an area of 500 and 530 millimeter, square millimeters. Okay, next. And the axis, the, the iliofemoral axis in the right side, we got a minimum diameter of 7.1 millimeters. Um, very tortoise. So thank you very much, Raul. I can show you where we are now, and then we uh, can... Can I, uh, can I just ask you a question just before we start? Of course. Uh, it, it's interesting that you selected the 20 uh, uh, half size, actually. You selected the, the half size uh, uh, balloon, mm -hmm. uh, size of valve, uh, and uh, you had, uh, it was going a little fast, but uh, you had the 20, you selected the 27.5, yes? Yes, uh, actually... Uh, you had 5% uh, oversizing with this valve or uh, something like this? Mm. Yes, the, the idea of intermediate sizes is avoiding over-expansion and also infra-expansion that might lead to leak. So here the alternative was 26, where we were at 0% over-expansion, which means that normally we need to put more volume in the balloon for an adequate anchoring. And then the other size could be 29, where we go to 26% of over-expansion, which increases the okay. risk of annulus rupture. So intermediate okay, size... Okay, I am in asking this question because one of the main interests of this MyVal is also to propose half-size, you know, half-sizes. This is very original for a balloon expandable valve, and uh, I like it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm going to show you now uh, at which point we are now. Um, so the setting is we are with conscious sedation, the basin is awake. We have a left radial artery where we guided our function uh, and a right femoral where we do will do our uh, TAVI procedure. We don't have yet the Python introducer in place. We will show you how it works in this patient. As you can see in the angio and you saw in CT, it's very tortuous, the uh, iliac and femoral axis. There is some calcification down there uh, at the mid-level of the femoral head. So we puncture a little bit higher. This is the right moment of the puncture, right there. And we advance our wire. You see the tortuosity pulls our wire back. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And this is uh, the projection that we estimated. As you can see, uh, the alignment of the three leaflets is very good. We had the hard navigator. Maybe we can see it later uh, after the procedure and see the final position of the valve according to the to the hard navigator in the end. But uh, yes. we have cross. This is cross in the valve. It took uh, about, uh, I, I would say, 10 seconds, but probably it was a minute. <laughs> and uh, you see it's very calcified, even more than what we saw in the CT. And there it was, very eccentric, the crossing. And we have our safari wire in place. So if you like, I, I can show you now the crimping of the valve. Can yes. we see the table, please, there? So this is Belen, our nurse, who is crimping all our balloon expandable valves. She has already done the washing of the of the device. Can we see... Enseña la válvula, Belen, a la cámara, porfa. Ponla así en alto. En alto para que se vea. Allí. We can see very well. We can see. Yeah. Zoom, zoom, please. Zoom. Zoomé, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> yes, well, we can see, yeah, we can see the valve fairly well, yeah. Okay, and the crimper device and the navigator in place. So now Belen is going to, pre to crimp it with the one of the commissures pointing down, like at 6 o'clock, okay, for this commissural alignment thing that we mentioned. So, vale, Belen, puedes empezar el crimpaje. So uh, the crimping is quite quick. So we are going to, we are going to wait for her to crimp, and then we do the predilation with the mammoth balloon. Uh, maybe we can show you how we install the Python introducer. If you agree, an introductor. Yes. No, no, no. Vamos a dilatar el instructor con el dedo, intentes de meterlo. Vale. No será so demasiado. So no te sangra el dedo. Con, con el grande este. So, we are going to prepare... Yeah, the you, you will be no using this. Sorry, Alain. 
you will be using the 14 French introducer that you have to dilate with the 18 French dilator, if I understood, yeah? Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. So okay. I, I'm going to remove my 11 French introducer now. We are still uh, watching the valve okay. uh, crimping. Vamos a ver ya la mesa, por favor. No, déjame el dilatador. El dilatador, ¿quieres? No, me refería a dilatar el introductor. Como hacemos siempre. Vale, vamos para adentro, venga. So you can see me right now. Okay. So you can see very well the, the Python, I think. I, there is only one band for expansion here. As I s told you, this is a... Vamos a meter la mesa un poco. This is a very tortoise femoral, so we are going to see down there. Okay. Now it's very rectified with the wire. Okay. Yes. Let's see the ventricle. And this is a safari, right? Vamos a ver el ventrículo. It's a safari. Sorry? It's easy it to safari wire? Yeah, it's a safari. It's our standard wire for Taver. We have used also Confida, but uh, normally we use. We use Safari. Yes. So there is one maneuver recommended with this introducer, uh, especially for larger sizes, from 27 ahead, which is dilating the introducer uh, with uh, one dilator a little bit larger. Uh, it's the same size of the valve. So it doesn't, doesn't mean that we are going to a larger size, but this is just to diminish the resistance. Okay, so... Okay. Now it's done. Después de verte. Can you confirm, uh, Ignacio, that in case you need it, you can remove the valve, the assembly, through the sheath, uh, to change it, for example, if you are not satisfied with the valve, you, you can remove it? So imagine that while we are going up, uh, we lost the wire from the ventricle. Uh, in that case, it's a challenging situation. We can remove all the delivery system with the valve inside without removing the introducer. We have okay, so this is something that I wanted to stress because it's Thanks a big advantage. Valid. Yes, it's important. Of course, this is an expandable uh, introducer, so you have to check the tip of the introducer when do you are going inside with the valve mounted on the balloon to make sure yeah. that we don't get uh, attached. If so, uh, you can rotate a little bit the delivery system, and normally it works. Okay, I fine. That's interesting. I have only done that once, so this is me <laughs> my global experience with, with that. S so now, uh, if you can see us, we are advancing the Mammoth Balloon. It's a very flexible balloon. It's compatible with how many French? I don't remember. It's compatible with uh, nine French. Nine French. So we already have the Python in place, but we could do a valvuloplasty, for example, with this balloon. And as you can see, it's very flexible. And what the balloon size? It's 20 millimeters. This is a non-aggressive predilation. Uh, OK, OK, fine. You can see here the balloon. I'm going to be to see if the valve is ready. Belen, the prosthesis está. Okay, the valve is ready. So you can see uh, it's quickly as uh, always with balloon expander. Mario. Vale. So we are going to prepare. Okay. Peacemaker on. Balloon up, balloon down, peacemaker off. Okay, the patient is very, very stable. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, uh, in uh, regular life, are you, uh, you said that we are not always predilating the valve, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, in, you know, we are using uh, five different types of tower devices here. Uh, I have to say that when we started using Accurate Neo, uh, we got the habitude of predilation because you know that with that prosthesis is very common to need it. But we have almost abandoned this with balloon expandable valves. 
now we think that sometimes when it's very critical the arctic stenosis it's not so easy to enter and you can go uh, abruptly into the lv i think we can easily avoid this with a, a mild predilation like this okay fine well, what do you think alain you, you about predilation well, actually we uh, we uh, i would say that we predilate uh, only in case of uh, uh, severe calcification of the of the valve you know we, uh, we forget about predilating in the majority of patients Belen, cuando quieras. Yeah. Vale, la pantalla. So we start doing the flex and I continue advancing. Sujeta tu la guía. Sujeta tu la guía. Okay, while, while Polito is doing the flex, we advance. Okay, I'm going to place the pigtail properly before advancing anymore. So uh, I'm going to do scene here just to solve the radio peg bands. Okay. Uh, so in the, in the ventricular size there is a more dense band then a more clear one and there are more dense ones we go we go to this second one hmm. Un poco más. Uh, we are going to remove the flex because remove. sometimes uh, for the crossing uh, the, the, se the the flex makes it more challenging Puedes push the wire please okay y sacalo un poco we are going to take an, a different angulation and then we cross. Okay, it's been a opa. This is what we try to avoid. But you see, even with predilation, with such calcification. Okay, now we are more or less in the adequate position. Estoy avanzando ahora. Test. Test. Okay, we are maybe a little bit high, so I'm going to push a little bit more. Okay, there we are. But can you can you uh, can you see the darker yeah. band? Thin it. Yeah. Sí. Vale. Uh, we are going to go quickly because the patient is hypotensive. Peacemaker yes. on. Vamos, ya, Mario. Sube, inyecta. Voy. Sube, venga, está arriba. Okay, I'm correcting a little bit the position. Hasta el final. Balón abajo. Marca pasos a 40. Okay. Uh, since we crossed the bus, the patient was a bit hypotensive. Sorry, I guess we have to, to speed up. Nora? No, you had to Nora? A 10. So let's see the recovery of the pressures. Vamos a sacar el balón. We are going to administer uh, noradrenaline to raise the pressures, but they are slowly going up. Well. Okay. So pressures are going back slowly. I'm going to check that everything is fine, uh, even if this dungeon will not be perfect. Sube un poco más, 816. Well, we see the pressures going up. Okay. Cine. We leave the balloon there just in case we need to post dilate, but it seems all correct. So yes, well, actually, uh, ah, it's good. <laughs> I think the other one could be removed now if you wanted to do it. I think, uh, so w we made this pressure thing just to put some emotion on the case. Yeah, <laughs> we are removing the balloon. And it seems from Anjo, from what we have predicted, that the alignment is good. But we are going to show you now the the hard navigator. You see the pressure we are calm. We have a left bundle branch block. Maybe we were a bit a, a little bit lower than what we planned initially, but you can see that even with the predilation, positioning of the processes was challenging. Maybe we should have done a more aggressive one. I don't know what you think. Yes, yes, probably. probably. Well, actually, you, you had to mm. rush during uh, for valve delivery because of the uh, mm. hypotension. So I understand that we had the feeling that the valve was a little too low, uh, too, mm -hmm. um, a little uh, too much in the left ventricle in comparison to the uh, medium mm -hmm. marker. And, uh, but well, that, that, that's perfectly all right. I mean, uh, the results will be optimal. Mm. So I'm going to do a scene in 
uh, with the hard navigator that you are seeing now and try to see the, the double lines that mark where the commissure is. Yes. Okay, you see it? And you see the green uh, mountains, <laughs> the three mountains, are the native cuspids. So you can see that we are uh, practically perfect. It's it yes, absolutely, yeah. I don't know if you see what I mean, because we are just developing this, yeah. and maybe we are not able to explain it perfectly yet. No, no, but the commissioner is in front of the mm. um. So we are going to do a final angle here, and if you want, we can close the artery live. Sure. Vale. Cine. Good. It's perfect. Perfect. Thank you. So uh, we are going to go with the same uh, left radial axis to the to the femoral. Maria J. How long we have? Ten minutes. Oh no! Take your time. Take your time. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, you have 15 minutes, you know. We, okay. Uh, 10 minutes. But it's very interesting, you know, to observe you doing that step by step. Vale, vamos con un JL, venga. So for going down, we always take this as secondary axis, the r left radial. And for going down, sometimes it's challenging and we are used to doing it with a Jatkin left catheter. Like that normally is very simple and we don't waste time trying to go to the femoral with other catheters. So there is a left bundle branch block. I have to say that by now we are at about 25 cases with my val in our center. And yes. we only have implanted one peacemaker in, in this patient. So in this case, the implantation was low, but still, uh, I think Alfredo, our colleague, measured the membrane of septum, and it was 10 millimeter long. So normally it should be preserved at least partially the co conduction system. Yes, well, yeah. So this is the left jatkin. To the other side. Okay, and we go down like this very quickly. Can I uh, ask you a question during the time you are doing this? Sure. Uh, for uh, valve positioning, uh, do you use mainly the, the medium marker or the dark band to, p to position the, the, the valve? Actually, a little bit higher is, uh, I will show you what we tried to do. Uh, can you see uh, in this image the th the bands, the radio, pa the more yes, clear? Yes, see the band, mm. but it seems that the band is below the level of the... Yeah. Uh, the uh, the yes. sinus line. So this was too low, this is what I mean. I tried to reposition it during the inflation, but given the high degree of calcification, I could not move up anymore. So it was an, opera an operator's fault. <laughs> well, actually, the positioning is not bad at all, but uh, uh, it could have been placed a little higher by one or two millimeters. el dilatador con otra J? No, no, es normal. Ok, va, lo dejamos por aquí. Ok, then now we are going to, for closing, we are going to advance the small dilator of the Python introducer to make it progressive the, the, the closure. ¿Puedo quitar el isocentro este al final? O sí. Lo meto, lo dejo, ya hmm. Tira un poco de la vida. Sí. So we, we use a standard Teflonate J wire and the dilator of the Python, the, the small one. Mm -hmm. We have prepared, I have not mentioned, with Superglides, this is our routine. We started with uh, Prostar, but uh, it has been a few years now that we have been using um, the, the Proglides. We have also tried Manta with intermediate results. I think we use it also in more challenging and calcified cases. But our, yes. pre our preferred strategy is the is the um, two proglides. So I'm going so to. Two proglides. Sujeta me la vía. Yes. Bueno, yo te lo tú. Todo junto. Todo, todo, todo. Coge. Okay. So our nurse is removing the introducer. Rápido. Okay. So first one worked perfectly. There is no much bleeding. Still the second one to 
to be in place. Mm. Aquí hay poca luz. And the second one went down perfectly. So I'm going to remove the wire because it does not seem that we will need an angio seal or something like that. So I push it down. It's very important this coordination of the first and second operators that when I go down, he's not compressing even if there is bleeding because if not, uh, it we cannot go to the vessel's wall. Yes, it's a good trick. Hmm. So, uh, in these cases, we have checked the last ACT was 244, but there is no bleeding at all. So, uh, I wonder if you reverse the, the pouring in these cases or not. Half, half. half dose is reversed. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we're, go we're going to check. It seems okay. We always do a, a few minutes of compression, but we can do a quick check by Anjo. Vale, un test, por favor. Para que te me tire un poco más la mesa. Vale. A ver, estás. Lo comprimo yo. Déjame. Vale. Te comprimo. Vale. Test. Yes, I'm in the other. Test. Ok. Vale. We see all the length of the vessel in case we have cause uh, and you see we still have to compress but there is no apparent bleeding. <coughs> so in this case we normally remove the wire the, the peacemaker only if the ECG remains exactly the same. In this case we have a uh, left bandel branch block. So we are not doing atrial stimulation which is like a new fashion <laughs> strategy i don't know if you are using in Rouen, uh, no, but no, no, no no i explain why Bec exactly for this reason you know that uh, for example here uh, if you stimulate on the gadoir you have to uh, to recatheterize the, uh, the the femoral vein at the end of the procedure so um, i don't see uh, too much of advantage of that yeah i, I agree it's an issue that we still need to, to learn more, but left bundle branch block, we have been including these patients in the, m in the MARE study, you know, with a uh, reveal implantation, with a uh, continuous ECG monitoring. Uh, there are very few events, but there are in these patients with left bundle branch block. So even out of the study, we continue with this strategy of uh, yes. continuous ECG monitoring uh, once the patient uh, goes out. And now this patient will go to the hospitalization, not to critical care unit, because we are doing this normally and also because of the COVID-19 situation and probably tomorrow we will send him home. Yes, this is absolutely great, yeah. great Ines. So it was a beautiful demonstration. Just because before leaving you, uh, would you uh, try to enumerate, if I can say, the, uh, the potential advantages of the uh, MyVal in comparison to uh, the Sapien uh, concerning the size, the crimping mm. and so on? Yeah. What do you think? For me, there are several differences. Uh, first one, the crimp is uh, directly on the balloon, uh, which is important because it's quicker. I mean, if you have to implant rapidly a second valve, this is important. A uh, few seconds can change uh, the outcomes of a patient. Uh, also, you can use a 14 French introducer. For Sapien 3, is larger for larger sizes. Uh, I think for uh, Sapien Ultra will be also 14. We will see how this works. Uh, but the main difference is probably the intermediate sizes that can adequate better uh, in terms of oversizing and reduce the risk, the rare risk of anaerobic rupture, but the very dramatic risk at the same time. And finally, the larger sizes. Th there are many yes. centers who who are very who like very much Edwards, but still they are using my valve for these patients that don't have solution. That's great. Ines, you did a fantastic job and it was extremely instructive for all of us.